know what I'm saying? Ready? Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Glad you can make it. Welcome, visitors. Our first song will be Step by Step. And for those that are able, would you please stand? <clears throat> song, He Has Made Me Glad. <clears throat> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. One more time. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen, church.
Good morning. Um, I'll be reading from Luke chapter 17. Luke 17, 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And he saw them and he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Dear Lord, we're so happy that you look upon us without regard to really who we are, where we're from, where we're, what we've done, and you look at us as you looked at this Samaritan who was ostracized and maybe ridiculed, maybe uh, Maybe it was a racist thing against him even, not only because of his leprosy, but uh, it didn't matter to you. And you were, you answered his prayer. And here we are praying to you, wondering how we present ourselves to you, but the point is that we present ourselves to you. We offer up our words of lament or petition. We offer up our words of worship and praise. And, and you hear us, and that's what you're expecting. That's what you're asking for. That's what you are desiring. You make it so easy because who can we turn to, especially in this world that uh, is perplexing, despairing, uh, even dead-ended in the way things are going, short run, long run. There, there, there are no answers to uh, our problems our problems as humans, our problems in, in our home, our problems at work, in our government. But you make it easy. We ask and you heal, and we wish to respond. Even right now, we respond thanking you, offering ourselves over again to you willing at least uh, in our spirit if we can't muster our flesh to do it to say we will follow you till we die we will honor you until we can't speak anymore and bless this day and bless Stan in his service and bless his family especially right now bless our elders and their families. Um, bless those that work uh, tirelessly behind the scenes. 
the most distinct, uh, easier here in this building. In Jesus' name I pray. Brother, I thank you for that heartfelt prayer. Our song before communion is Lamb of God. <clears throat> Your only son, no sin to hide. But you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb. the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king Sacrifice the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the holy Lamb of God. O wash me blood my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God Pastor I was so lost I should have died but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the holy Lamb of God. O wash me precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen, church. Good morning, church. We now come to the part of our service where as Christians we celebrate the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior. I'd like to read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for those we give thanks... <clears throat> excuse me. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ... And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, and we, are all, and we all partake of the one loaf. Would you pray with me, please? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for sacrificing your son for us and whose body is represented here in this bread as we partake of it now. We ask you to be with us each and help us to partake it in a manner pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me for the cup? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sacrificing your son whose, whose blood was shed for us that we might be able to live with you. The blood of, his, of your son and our Savior is represented here by this fruit of the vine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. concludes the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> we now have an opportunity to give of our, <clears throat> of our physical blessings back in order to help support the church here and the work that we do here in Lansing. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. We ask you to be with us and help us to always be cheerful givers and not just of our physical money but also our time and our talents in christ's name we pray amen Church, the song before our lesson will be Every Time I Feel the Spirit. And for those that are able, if you would please stand. <clears throat> Hope my voice can carry this song. I haven't sung it in a while. Help me out, church family. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon that mountain when my Lord spoke, out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine. Asked my Lord if all were mine. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I 
feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, Jordan River, it's chilly and cold, chills my body, not my soul. There ain't but one train upon this track, it runs to heaven and then right back. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Roger. We're going to have to work on that song on a singing night. Sounds like there's some folks that didn't quite know that song very well. We'll have to work on that. Um, I appreciate everyone being here this morning, worshiping together as a family of God. I also appreciate all of your prayers for my wife and family as they're traveling to uh, the funeral of Jana's brother. Uh, appreciate all of you uh, praying for that. Uh, one lady came to me and said, I know that she has a lot of family in Lubbock, but she's going to need a lot of support when she gets back. And I appreciated that thought, uh, but I have to tell you, I'm pretty proud of my wife and their family because even though it's a tragedy, even though it's a tragic death of her 38-year-old brother, they've chosen to be thankful. They've made the choice to, be th to give thanksgiving through, through the tragedy. And so and that's what we Christians do, right? Uh, and so uh, I'm proud of my wife and family for the way they have handled this. But I, I thank you for their prayers and concerns. Which brings me to the lesson uh, this morning. As you know, we finished up a sermon series on uh, communion. And, uh, and we looked uh, last week at Memorial Day. Well, I didn't want to start a new series, per se, because I... Uh, uh, next week, we're going to have graduation day. For, so next week, I, I hope that you will come ready to support the seniors. The elders are going to give more announcements toward the end of the service about uh, graduation day and what we're going to be doing. But then after that, I go on a two-week vacation. And thank goodness, because I haven't been on vacation in a long time, family. So uh, we're so next week's graduation, then I two-week vacation. So I didn't want to start a new series and have a three-week break right in the middle of the series. So... I'm just going to do a one-parter, and as I was looking through, I wanted to look at Thanksgiving, and I said, I have never preached before on Psalm 117, so I'm going to do it. And so here today, we're going to look at Psalm 117, and I entitled the sermon, 10 Things You May Not Have Known About 117. Now, I know some of you are many smart, so you don't have to come up to, well, I need that. Okay, that's fine, but I mean, most of our culture doesn't know these 10 things about the particular psalm, and so that's what I was going to go through. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. It's very short, <laughs> so it's, it's, very, it is, it's very short. Let's read it together. Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's it. There's the whole psalm right there, folks. Now, let's talk about, you're probably thinking, man, how's he going to get a whole sermon out of this? <laughs> you don't know me too well, do you? I even make a sermon out of anything. But anyway, I want to talk about things you probably did know. Here's the things you probably did know about Psalm 117. First of all, it is the shortest psalm in the book. And, uh, and that's made many times that's why it's avoided, because, I mean, you read two sentences and you're done, and so many preachers don't preach on it. and It doesn't seem all that challenging, uh, but, uh, but that's what's one of the things you probably did know. If you're taking a Trivial Pursuit game and said, what's the shortest psalm in the Bible? Most of you probably would have said Psalm 117. We also know it's bursting with praise with, to God. That's the whole theme of the thing is, is thanksgiving and praise and honoring God. It is very small in content, but it is extremely large in spirit. And three times within that two verses, two small verses, but yet three times in that two verses, it calls us 
to praise God and to give thanks. And so, what, so I chose to study Psalm 117 today before we get into a, a long sermon series. Because first of all, I think we're in a time where we all need to focus on being thanks, get, thankful. Just as, as, uh, as Brother read for us this morning, Brother Al, Diana read for us this morning, that Jesus healed ten lepers and yet only one had the thankfulness to return and to say thank you. And Jesus said, where are the other nine? Didn't they receive, receive the same blessing? I wonder how many times us Christians, God is blessing all of us. I wonder how many of us are truly thankful and return to God with the heart of thanksgiving. And so I want to focus on this psalm to remind us of that and to remind us to be thankful and and to learn maybe some things that maybe you didn't know about Psalm 117. So let's get into the 10 things that most people really don't know about this particular uh, psalm within the book of Psalms. First of all, the first thing you may not have known, like I said, some of you probably did, but the first thing is that scholars and people who study the Bible uh, they refer to the psalm, uh, Psalm 117, as the heart of the Bible. In fact, I, I've even been to some conferences where people say, hey, let's read the heart of the Bible. And I was like, hmm. And then they turn to Psalm 117. Many people just refer to 117 as the heart of the Bible. Now, the reason they've done this is because the Bible has a total of 1,189 chapters. Feel free to go home this afternoon and count them. But there's 1,189 chapters of the Bible. And so if you do the quick math, divide in half, and find the middle number, it's 559. And wouldn't you know, guess what is the 559th chapter in the middle of the Bible? It is Psalm 117. And so because it's sort of like, right, it is the center chapter of the Bible. Many people refer to it as the heart of the Bible. And I think it's kind of, I, I don't believe it's, it's uh, by chance. I don't believe it's any kind of irony. I think God planned it that way. But the heart of the Bible is focused on praise and thanksgiving. I don't think that's by accident. I think God and his divinity does things. And I think it's no strange coincidence that what people call the heart of the Bible is focused on praise and being thankful to God. And so I think that is an interesting thing to consider. And so that is the first thing to consider. The second thing to consider that I want you to know about is the Psalm 117 is is part of a Psalter. And what is a Psalter? There's a Psalm and a Psalter. Now, what a Psalter is, is it's a collection of Psalms. Like, you know, even in our churches today, in our, our words, we sing a song, but sometimes we'll take two or three songs and make a... Make a what? Not a melody. That's <laughs> the melody is what you sing. But uh, we, we make a we, we, we make a, a collection of them, and, and we sing those a medley. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. The word medley, medley. And so the medley is what a psalter would be. A psalter is just a collection of psalms, and psalms are just songs. So the psalter is a collection of songs, and the collection of songs. In chapters 113 through 118, make up one Psalter called the Hallel. Now, this is very important if you're a Jew because the Hallel was sung often. It was sung many times. And, and the word Hallel in Hebrew just simply means praise. That's all it means. And so they called this, this selection, one, Psalm 113 through 118, it was they, it was a medley of, a, of songs that they sang, and they would sing the Hallel. And even today, Jews sing the Hallel. And so the, the Psalm 117 is, is a part of that. The third thing you may not know is this entire Psalter, Psalm 113 through 118, the Psalter is a messianic prophecy. And now what that means is these prophesied things about, the, about Jesus Christ. The, the Psalter as a whole, all the themes, it praises God for his salvation from sin and death. And a lot of, that is the major theme of the Psalter is 
God is coming and God is going to provide salvation from sin and death. And of course, that's obviously pointing to Jesus Christ. He, Jesus Christ is the one who brings that salvation. In Psalm 116, uh, part of that message, it, it talks about the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. So clearly, what is that cornerstone? The New Testament defined it. The cornerstone is Jesus Christ, right? The church is a building built on the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. And so obviously, this is a messianic prophecy. And so that is clearly messianic. And so obviously, this, that's what this Psalter is. And Psalm 117 is a praise. It's praising God and giving thanks to God for Jesus Christ who delivers to us salvation because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Isn't that beautiful? And we should live every day with thanksgiving for that blessing. No matter what comes our way, no matter what tragedies, no matter what losses we experience in this fallen world, we will always have salvation in Jesus Christ. And because of that salvation, we will get to see our loved ones again. We will get to be reunited in the great Beulah land. The land of marriage. The land of reuniting. And that's what it is about. And that's why this psalm has such great uh, meaning. Because it is saying, God, thank you for sending us a Messiah. Who's going to die for our sins so that we can have a chance. At eternal life. Because even the Old Testament people. This folks. This is the Old Testament. Even the Old Testament people knew. I can't make it without a savior. I try to follow the law. The law fails. I can't follow the law. I need someone to rescue me. Praise God for that rescuer. The Messiah. The fourth thing. That most people don't realize. About this particular psalm. Is that it echoes the covenant given to Abraham. If you look at Genesis chapter 18, verse 18, God promises Abraham that he would be the father to all the nations of the earth. It, it even says here, it's just 18, he says, Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation. And in him, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Did you see the difference in the singular and the plural? He will become a mighty nation, singular, and in him all nations, plural, will be blessed. And we've been looking at this in the book of Galatians on Sunday night, if you've been joining us online for our Sunday evening worship. Because when you are baptized into Christ, you join the nation of God, no matter what nation you're in. So all nations come to the nation of Abraham through baptism into Jesus Christ. And Psalm 117 reminds us that God's promise and the fulfillment of it all is in Jesus Christ from Abraham's seed. Matthew 1 1 talks about that. Because what did it say? In Psalm 117, verse 1 Praise the Lord for all you, what? Nations. All the nations. Not nation, but all nations. Now that's, that's pretty remarkable for the Old Testament. To include all the nations. Because in the Old Testament, remember they're Jews. What did Jews think? That they were the chosen race. That you had to be a, part, you had to be a Jew to be a member of God's beloved. And so to say nations and include all the world, that was pretty radical for Old Testament. But all they were doing was taking the words right from Genesis 18. The word of the promise, the fulfillment of Abraham's promise. And so they saw that it echoed the covenant given to Abraham. The fifth thing that most people don't know about the Psalm 117 is that it's quoted in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 15, Paul here is teaching that the Jews and the Gentiles, they're the same under Christ. In Christ, there is no difference there is no male or female. There is no slave or master. There is no chosen race. or anything. If you're in Christ, you're in God's nation and you're all equal. And that's what he was teaching there in Romans 15. 
And in verses 8 through 11, he says, I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the fathers and for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, and here is the quote from Psalm 117, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And so Paul uses Psalm 117 to teach that the Jews and the Gentiles are alike. There is no more race privilege. Paul taught the early church that the church was the fulfillment of this psalm. It, the, the church was the fulfillment of Psalm 117. It fulfilled what God manifested in the gospel to the Gentiles. And so a lot of people don't even recognize when they're reading this that it's right out of Psalm 117 and it's meant to connect the dots for Jews especially to see that the prophecy, the Messianic prophecy that is in the Hallel of Psalm 117 is fulfilled in the New Testament church. So the sixth thing you may not know about this Psalm 117 is that it may, now this is the, the iffy one, but it may have been sung by Jesus and the apostles the night before he died. Now I will tell you, I'm just presenting this because this is what most people say, but really there's no way to know for sure. There's absolutely no way to know for sure. Now, if you go on historical evidence, then it, it does look that way. In fact, many people just accept the historical evidence and say, this is the one, but there's really no way to know. Uh, because we know that when Jesus was taking the Lord's Supper, we know by the text it says, after the Lord's Supper was done, they sang a song. We find that in Matthew 26, 30. It says, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So it doesn't say what song they actually sang. But like I said, his people are sure, scholars are sure, this is 117 that they sang, the Psalter, the Hallel. The, the Psalter was what they sang. And they're basing that off of historical tradition. They say tradition among the Jews was always, and like I said, it still is even today, the, that the Jews would sing the entire Hallel Psalter at any Passover meal. Every time they had the Passover meal, they concluded by singing the Psalter. And so that's basically why they say, well, then Jesus sung the Psalter, the Hallel, Psalm 117. They must have sung it after the Lord's Supper because that's what they always did for hundreds of years after Passover meal. But we don't know that for sure. I mean, maybe Jesus would say, hey, we're doing something completely different. Let's sing a new song. Well, I don't know. But still, that's what most people uh, like to say is that he's saying that particular song. Historical evidence would, prove, would suggest that, but uh, we just don't know for sure. And so uh, most scholars and commentators tell you that they sang the Psalter based on historical tradition. I just wanted to let you know that, uh, just in case someone ever confuses you on that. But now you know the why. Now the seventh thing that you may not know about Psalm 117 is it is fulfilled in the New Testament church. We just kind of talked about that a little bit, but it, Paul brings out even more in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. In Galatians 3, 3, 16, he says, The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Did, did you see that? The promises are spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say and to seeds, meaning many people, but to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. So what we clearly see here is that Paul is saying 117 is fulfilled in the New Testament church. The, in Christ, the Gentiles, not the Jews, all nations are saved. All nations, not just Jews. And so we see the fulfillment there. The next one, uh, number eight, the eight thing you may not know, and boy, is it hot up here, folks. Woo, it's getting hot up here. <laughs> it's a 90-degree day out there, isn't it? Whew. All right, no, we're good. All right. The eight thing you may not know, and the, the, these are, the first seven are kind of, are kind of out of the psalm, 
uh, things you may not know, but the, the last three are going to be uh, thematic within the psalm. But the, the, one of the major themes uh, is that God deserves your enthusiastic praise. This is what the psalm is teaching you. God, God, through this psalm, is saying, I deserve you to be giving me enthusiastic praise. I don't know how we can sing some of these songs. And when I look out, some of you just... I don't understand that. Do we know what we're singing? We, do you know who we're singing to? This psalm is clearly about thanksgiving. It says, praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him. For great is his love toward it. He even gives us the reason. He loves you, so you should be enthusiastic about it. So God deserves your enthusiastic praise. I want to talk about praise. Do you praise God every single day? Do you wake up out of bed and say, Thank the Lord I have another day to be thankful? Do you praise God even when the circumstances of this dark world are not very good? See, our family has had to face that here this last week. Sometimes we live in this fallen world that Satan has control of right now. But even though we dwell in this old dark place, we know God has given us a Savior and we have a way out of it. And we give Him the praise no matter what goes on around us. Do you praise Him when you wake up until the time you fall asleep? In other words, do you praise without ceasing? For that is what, is going, that is what this psalm is teaching us. The ninth thing, the second theme within the verse is that God's love towards us exceeds all expectations. See, this is one of the things that, that people don't realize about God. I think sometimes people outside the church who have not come into the grace of God, they see Him as a killjoy. They, they, I don't want to waste my time at church. Man, I could be doing a lot more fun things. I could be doing a lot of other things that are a lot more fun in my life than sitting in a building uh, doing singing or whatever they do. If I go to God, I'm going to have to follow all these rules. They don't understand. God says it's about the love that I have towards you. Those of us who are in Christ, we know God's love. We understand it. We love him so much and he loves us so much. That's why we wake up and can't wait to come. Because of the love that is shared. And that's what this psalm reminds us in verse 2. For great is his lo love Toward us, God's love exceeds all of our expectations. So my question to you is, have you told God that you love him today? Have you woke up and said, God, you love me all the time. You never cease. I love you today. I love you. Have you told him that? How many of you men who are married, you just... Tell your wife every once in a while you love her. See, you know what? When I was early, in the early years, I had that, that old kind of staunch theory that I told her I loved her once, and if I changed my mind, I'll let her know. <laughs> right? And some of our, I kind of grew up with that theory, figuring, you know, I told her, she ought to know it. She wasn't too happy about that. She wanted to hear me let her know it a lot more often than apparently I was. And my wife was brave enough to correct me. You're not telling me enough. And I realized, oh, when you love someone, you got to let them know it. I don't know how many times I've done a funeral and the, and the surviving family members have come up and said, I just wish I would have told them that I loved them. I regret because I, I, I do love them and I, I just wish I would have let them know. God is constantly letting us know he loves us. And I want to know, have you let him know that you love him? Do you tell God you love him every day? See, that's, this is one of the things, you know, again, we used to get in a fight when in our younger years. But my wife always used to end every phone call by saying, love you, babe, bye. 
But I was like, don't tell me that all the time. Because then I just have to respond and say, love you too, babe. But I really don't really mean it. I'm just saying it. Because you did. And I just want to hang up. So we used to have those kind of fights all the time. Guess what? I never won. Because the thing was, she, she wanted to hear it. Every day she wanted the, the verbal confirmation. And God is saying, I'm giving you verbal confirmation every day. Look at my word. I'll tell you I love you every time you open these pages. And I wonder if we have the same thing back to God. Do you tell him every day that you love him? Do you share that God's love? The love that you have for God and love he has for us. Do you share it with others? See, that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to be Christ's ambassadors in this world. And if Christ is constantly trying to tell you, I love you, then that's what we should be doing to others. We should be constantly letting other people know that we love them because of Jesus Christ. So do you share that love with others? Do you let others know that he is your greatest love? Do people at work know that, you see, people at work know that you love your husband, that people at work know you love your wife, they know you love your kids, but do they know that God is the number one priority? Do they know that God is your greatest love? See, all these things, he does that for you. You know what, in the New Testament he says, you, you are my workmanship, you are my masterpiece. I love you more than anything else I've created. I created this world. I created diamonds. I created all the resources. I created everything. I created the Milky Way, the galaxy. I created it all. But you are my masterpiece. God says, I love you more than anything. Do we let other people know we love God more than anything? And then the tenth, the third theme, like I said, the first seven were external. The last three are with or themes within the verse, or themes within the text. But the, thir- the tenth thing you may not know is that God's faithfulness is endless. God's faithfulness is endless. That is the third major theme. Such a small psalm. Two simple verses, and yet three major doctrines come out of the psalm. God deserves your praise. God's love toward us is, exceeds all expectation. And the third one is God's faithfulness is endless. How many people do we know? Just, just look around. This church used to be huge, right? What would our church look like if we just got the people who are still living? I'm not talking about the dead. But the ones who are still living, who live in Lansing, would just come back. Who gave up on their faith. Because they got mad at somebody, they got in a fight with somebody, whatever it is. Their faith ended in some way. God says, my faith, it never ends. My faithfulness is endless. And so folks, we should have the same kind of commitment. If God's faith in us will never end, then why would we give up our faith just because someone made us mad? Or because someone we, we don't like or we got in an argument or whatever it is. Folks, we need to get over that. God's faith is endless. Then we need to be endless in our faith back with him. His faithfulness endures forever. Did you catch that last part? The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. That means even when we die, his faithfulness has stopped. It continues forever. It's everlasting. He will always be faithful to us. We can always trust in Him. Even when things look bad. So these are the ten things that maybe you did not know about Psalm 117. Two small verses within the text, but so rich in themes, in doctrines, in instructions, and things that can uplift us. I hope it has been beneficial to you this morning to look at this little psalm. I hope you have been reminded to walk out of here this morning and be thankful for Jesus Christ. And that is the lesson for you this morning. If you need to respond in any way, maybe you are struggling with some things, 
then you need to respond and say, I've lost my thankfulness. I need to back. You can respond and we can pray for you and uplift you. Maybe you need to start your life in Jesus Christ and be baptized in, into his body and have your sins forgiven and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We can do that. Whatever your need is, now is our family time. Let's stand and sing and come down if you need to. Or if you're on Facebook, you can type it out. The elders are watching. Thank you, Brother Stan, for that very encouraging message. Our song of invitation is, Do You Know My Jesus? Hmm. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the Just, just felt the song this morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the name. Okay. Okay. It's cancer. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, just, uh, excuse me a moment. <laughs> Brother Roger, <laughs> while you're getting yourself together, I can understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I would just like to church for uh, praying for my sister. She was uh, released from the hospital last Wednesday, and she's now uh, in Grand Rapids with my niece and her 
Every day. Yeah. Thanks again. You're welcome. So I have a, a few prayer requests that I want to start out with and then we'll pray for them. Um, Sylvia Potter, she asks, uh, prayer requests, our little cousin Dakota is battling cancer. She is currently going through chemo after having surgery to remove the tumor. She's only three. I pray for her strength and bravery through this battle. So we'll certainly lift her up. We'll certainly lift her up in prayer. And uh, Brother Ronnie came forward asking for prayer for his whole family. Uh, pray for our niece, Felicia, who is going through some tests for cysts on her pancreas and uh, just pray for the entire family from Brother Ronnie and then requests uh, for prayer from uh, Ju from Julie uh, uh, she has a friend uh, friend's brother-in-law Ricardo Sanchez who is suffering from poor health and getting very weak and so we're going to lift them up in prayer right now are there any other prayer requests at all? Okay. Bow your heads and pray with me, please, for these people. Uh, dear Lord, most heavenly Father, you're an awesome and mighty God, and we love you. And we're so thankful for your grace and mercy and, and healing powers that only you can give. We know you guide the doctors. You're the ultimate doctor. And so we lift up uh, some individuals this morning who are dealing with health issues. Uh, and you know what they are because you're God. You know everything. And so, Lord, we ask for, uh, if it be thy will, because it's always got to be your will, Lord. We, we want things in our time and our way, and it's, if it's not according to your plan, then it's not going to happen. So we just pray in a mighty way that it is your will that these people who are suffering from health issues and having tests and their, their families praying to you in a mighty way that, that you answer their prayers, Lord, that is, that is your will that they be healed so that we can give you all the glory and, and all the celebration for their healing, Lord. I lift these people up in prayer, uh, Ricardo and Felicia and Dakota, just that, praying that uh, it's your will that they be healed. These things ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so just a few announcements uh, before closing prayer. The elders have met recently, and uh, we're going to be uh, putting together a reopening plan, so to speak, to transition from uh, mask wearing all the time and and uh, uh, we encourage people still to get vaccinated if you haven't been. And, and if you're not feeling well, of course, don't come to worship or at least wear a mask and, and uh, limit your contact with people. And still, still be mindful of social distancing. I've, I've broken all kinds of rules. I've hugged people and um, I've been vaccinated, but we need to be mindful and be careful. Uh, this, this pandemic is not gone and, and there's still a lot of suffering as a result of it. Uh, but uh, by June 20th, there'll be uh, some information uh, disseminated to you and shared uh, with you from the elders and, and in announcements uh, from Shirley uh, in terms of how we're going to transition back to um, our normal schedule of activities in terms of bulletins and Wednesday night Bible studies and, and uh, things like that. And then also, I, I don't have the specific date, uh, the graduation what, what? next week. Okay, there we go. So graduation celebration next week. Um, then have a pizza and salad luncheon after worship uh, service. And so uh, we'll get uh, specific information uh, to you shortly about that. Uh, there'll be uh, Bibles uh, for the high school students and nice uh, plaques, uh, crystal plaques, or uh, um, little uh, items for uh, college graduates. 
Oh, for the people. Okay, so soda, water. Uh, well, we used to have a lot of water, uh, but uh, soda pop and iced tea or lemonade. Uh, the f members can bring uh, beverages for that uh, pizza and salad lunch, and that would be greatly appreciated. And anything else? That pretty much covers everything. Okay. All right. Well, um, if you would please stand, and we'll we'll be dismissed. We'll be dismissed uh, in the worship service. Dear Lord, most heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us to see another day, to be able to come to this building and worship you in spirit and truth and hear your word preached and, and to sing songs of praise to you, Lord. Just thank you. Thank you for being our God and loving us, Lord. And just pray that we take to heart uh, the message that uh, you delivered to us through Brother Stan, that we need to show love, express love, so we can enjoy being loved. Amen. For certainly we, we know you love us because we're here. Amen. So Lord, watch over us as we dismiss, uh, keep us safe from harm, uh, as eldership guide us, as, as we try to do the best thing and the safest thing for this congregation so that we can get back to, not necessarily how things used to be, but to better days ahead, Amen. to better days ahead. Lord, again, we just thank you for your son and for your continued blessings. These things ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We're dismissed. Oh, 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 just. Oh, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just a moment um, before we dismiss. Uh, please keep, this is from uh, Bob Campbell. And so uh, we'll, uh, we're going to uh, pray um, also for him. Please, please keep my father, Roy Campbell, in your prayers. This just came through. He was admitted to the hospital Thursday with fluid around his heart, which is in turn draining his lungs and causing pneumonia. And so he's, he's in ICU. Well, he's in ICU. Well, he's downgraded. Um, today marks his parents' 57th wedding anniversary. So they'll be spending it together in the hospital. So let's pray for our brother, brother Campbell and his family. That's got to be tough. That's got to be tough. Thanks. Dear Lord, most heavenly Father, kind of hot off the press, but we can always come to you in prayer anytime, anytime. And, and Lord, we shouldn't hesitate. Uh, we, we should be able to just stop and pray at a moment's notice, knowing that someone is in need and knowing that you answer our prayers. All we have to do is ask. So, Lord, we lift up the Campbell family, uh, his, his mom and dad, and and thank you for the blessing of 57 years that you've uh, allowed them to be married and have a union. And, and thank you for Brother Bob to, to, to think enough to send this message to us so we can lift up his parents and lift up his family in prayer. Um, what, a, what a testimony to his love for us uh, and, his, and his faith in you, Lord, that the prayers of the saints availeth much. And so we're lifting that family up in prayer, Lord. Bless his dad with, with your healing powers as only you can. And just pray that uh, he recovers soon. These things that I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, church family.